is the sixth and final section of the chi-squared test chapter and here we're going to be looking at applying goodness of fit tests to the geometric distribution now hopefully you'll remember that when we have a, a geometric distribution we have that one parameter which is p now we may need to estimate the uh, probability we need to estimate p now remember just like the previous distributions if we need to estimate p we uh, lose a degree of freedom we lose a degree of freedom so basically degrees of freedom is going to be number of cells minus two rather than uh, minus one now when we estimate the probability we're sort of working out the mean if you look at the calculation it, it, it's like the mean in a way um, and because the mean of a geometric distribution is 1 over p you'll notice that the formula looks upside down to what we're used to okay so when we estimate p that's going to be the number of observations n divided by the sum of um, each outcome times its probability yeah so it looks upside down to the other ones all the other ones we did before it was the sum of r times f of r over n now whether we need to estimate p or not the steps are going to be that we need to work out the um, uh, the expected probability for each outcome. So that'll be our first step: expected probability for each outcome. Once once we found the expected probability for each outcome, we then work out the expected frequency for each outcome frequency for each outcome outcome let's just change that word other to outcome not sure why I'll put other there for each outcome and then once we've um, done that we then need to use the formula uh, so the sum of the observed squared over the expected minus n the number of observations okay Sarah has a large DVD uh, ca collection every week she picks a DVD off the shelf and until and can uh, until she finds one that she would like to watch okay so the trials continue until we get success and then it stops so that's going to be a geometric distribution she thinks that there will be a 50% chance she will be in the mood to watch any particular DVD so P equals 0.5 there's the probability of success over the course of the year she records the number of DVDs she picks off the shelf before finding one she would like to watch the results are recorded in the table below part A calculate the expected frequencies if the number of DVDs considered is modeled as a geometric distribution uh, with p equal to 0.5 which is what we suspected it was going to be now before we start doing that if we look at the table we'll see that it stops at 4 okay because um, it seems like when she's got to the fourth DVD she's made her choice she's not gone on to a fifth DVD um, to choose that so she's always um, worked out by the time she's got to the fourth DVD work well, that's one I li would like to watch that doesn't mean that those probabilities don't exist so if, if we were working out the probability of this one it needs, the probability, it needs to be the probability that x is greater than or equal to 4 whereas for each one of these we just work out the probability of x is 1 the probability x is 2 and, and for this one here the probability x is 3 and so on but for that last probability uh, we need to say well it's 4 or more um, so 
let's do our little table here remembering that um, well actually let's write down what our formulas are before we write part A so the probability that x equals um, r or x equals x is p times by 1 minus p to the probability of r minus 1 the probability that x is greater than or equal to r um, is just 1 minus p to the power r minus 1 now we'll do our table so our first column is going to be r's so 1, 2, 3, 4 our second column is going to be our expected probabilities so probability of x equals r but remembering that when we work out this last probability here we want to work out the probability of x is greater than or equal to 4 yeah so not the probability the x equals 4 so basically that's going to be what's the probability that she chooses 4 or more DVDs and then the last column is going to be our expected frequencies goes in the last column so we'll write our working out so p is 0 0.5 so the working here is going to be 0 0.5 times by 1 minus p which is also 0 0.5 to the power r minus 1 which is uh, 0 next one will be 0 0.5 times by 0 0.5 to the power 1 uh, this one will be 0 0.5 times by 0 0.5 squared but on the final one uh, we use this formula here so it's just going to be 0 0.5 to the power 4 minus 1 and 0 0.5 to the power 3 so 0 0.5 to the power 3 so let's work out what we get now I'm going to put them as fractions so we will get uh, a half um, a quarter an eighth and this one will be an eighth as well now if I want to work out the expected frequencies I times each one of these numbers by n and n is 52 so let's just uh, clear these out of the way here so n is 52 so that's there so times in each one of those by 52 in the last column expected frequency C's are going to be 26 13 that's basically a quarter of 52 then 6.5 and this one will also be 6.5 so for part A the expected frequencies is there over here are going to be 26, 13, 6.5 and 6.5 okay Sarah wants to check if there is a 50% chance to watch any particular D uh, DVD is supported by the data formulate the null and high uh, alternate, alternate hypothesis so just like before H0 um, is going to be that um, the number of DVDs she uh, has to pick I could add before finding one that she wants to watch uh, but I'm going to leave that can be modelled by a geometric distribution with 0.5 as our parameter and then H1 is basically going the same thing that it can't be it's not a good model so I'm just going to write down the, um, uh, no I'll write the whole thing out the number of DVDs she has to pick uh, uh, cannot be modelled by this geometric cannot be modelled by this geometric. 
Okay, so that's part B. We've done our another alternate part hypothesis. Is Sarah right in her assumption? Uh, check at the 5% significance level. As usual, 5%. So we're going to work out x squared, which is going to be the sum of our observed squared over the expected minus n. So if we do that, uh, no cells need to be combined because we haven't got any expected frequencies less than 5. So that's going to be 33 squared over 26 plus 12 squared over 13 plus uh, 5 squared over 6.5 plus 2 squared over 6.5. Uh, minus the number observation 52. So let's see what we get for x squared. Right, so that gives us 5.42307, like that. Uh, I'm writing all of those down because I don't know what the value of chi squared is going to be. So let's look that up. So uh, number of degrees of freedom so we take away uh, just one because we've not had to estimate P so that's just a number of cells which is 4 minus 1 so we're looking this up at 5% significance level so we'll turn to the table um, 3 degrees of freedom 5% and we end up with a critical value of 7.815 7.815 now how does my spread compare well my spread of 5.423 is less than that okay which means that I accept H0 and that means, as my conclusion, that the number of DVDs she picks can be modelled by a geometric distribution with 0.5. Now, is this commenting? Do we need to comment on? Uh, what she thinks is going to happen she thinks is supported by the data so i would say that sarah is correct sarah i could have just written that down couldn't i sarah is correct okay she now be able to do exercise 6f on pages um one two one to one two two so you just need to remember that if we are working out the uh, probability, the expected probability, we use this formula. When we times that by n, we'll get the expected frequency. Now like Poisson, the last value, okay, so I'll put, if you want to put work out the probability, um, when you have that last value actually what you need to do is the probability of x greater than or equal to the last value so it's not really equal to that's what you need to do for that last value and when you want to work out the probability of x is greater than or equal to r so r is going to represent the that last value in the in the table so in the example we did that was four that will be one minus p to the power um, r minus one if we need to estimate p so if p is not given so we need to estimate the probability it's like the mean formula upside down so the number of observations 
multiplied by each outcome times or the sum of each outcome times its frequency okay and then when we estimate P we know that uh, the number of degrees of freedom is going to be the number of cells minus two 